Welcome to Electron Line. Just to show you that this actually does work, that this is indeed the correct equation or direct solution to this second order differential equation with constant coefficients that has complex roots, let's now go ahead and work this out. In other words, we're going to find the first and second derivative of the general solution, plug it back into the original equation and show that the left side does indeed equal zero showing that this is indeed the correct way of writing the solution to a problem like this where the characteristic equation gives us those complex roots. Well, let's go ahead and find the first and second derivative and see what we get. Finding the first derivative, y prime is equal to, we'll take the first, e to the 3t times the derivative of the second. Now the derivative of the cosine is the negative sign so this becomes minus c1 times the sine of t and the derivative of the sine is the cosine so plus c2 times the cosine of t so we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first the derivative of this would be 3e to the 3t and then this remains unchanged this becomes c1 cosine of t plus c2 sine of t. So now we found the first derivative of the solution. Now we need to find the second derivative. We probably need a little bit more room for that, so let's move it out here. So we have y double prime of t is equal to, so we'll have to do this twice now. So we take the derivative of this, which is the first, e to the 3t, times the derivative of the second, that would be minus c1 cosine of t, and minus c2 sine of t plus the second times the derivative of the first which is 3e to the 3t times and I didn't even leave myself enough room but we'll work it out so it's, it's so it'd be this unchanged minus c1 times the sine of t plus c2 times the cosine of t all right so now we have the derivative of this first part now we need the derivative of the second part so plus the first 3e to the 3t times the derivative of what's in here, that would be minus c1 times the sine of t, and that would be plus c2 times the cosine of t. And now we still have to get plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 9e to the 3t times this quantity unchanged, c1 cosine of t plus c2 sine of t. All right, so now we have the first derivative and we have the second derivative. We're now ready to plug that into the original equation. So in the original equation, now we need to combine things a little bit. So we'll factor out an e to the 3t and a c1 and see what we get. So e to the 3t times c1 times. So we have a minus cosine and we have a plus 9 cosine, that's minus 1 plus 9, that's plus 8 cosine of t. 8 cosine of t. How about c1 and the sine? So we have a c1 and the sine, we have minus 3 here and we have minus 3 there, that's minus 6. Minus 6 times the sine of t. So now we have to gather all the C2 terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So plus e to the 3t times C2. And first let's gather all the cosines. So we have four C2 terms. We have two with a cosine in them. We have three times a cosine and three, that was plus six times a cosine, six times a cosine of t. And what about all the sines? We have a minus one sine and we have a plus nine sine, that's plus eight. So plus 8 times the sine of t. All right, so now we have y double prime. We're going to now add to that a negative 6y prime, and we'll put it in the vertical order, makes it easy to see. So we're going to have an e to the 3t times c1 times. So now we go to y prime and multiply that times a minus 6 and gather all the c1 terms. So we have a C1 here, we have a C1 there with the cosine. So we have 3 times the cosine times the minus 6, that's minus 18 times the cosine of t. How about C1 and the sine? 
So we have a C1 sine here. That's minus 1 times a minus 6. That's plus 6. Plus 6 times the sine of t. All right. Now we have plus e to the 3t times all the c2 terms. So now we have to add up all the c2 terms on y prime. We have a c2 here with the cosine. It's plus 1 times a minus 6. That's minus 6 times the cosine. And all the c2 terms with the sine in them. So we have a c2 with a sine right here. It's 3 times this times a minus 6. That's minus 18. Minus 18 times the sine of t. All right, so now what we have here is we have the y double prime, and we have minus 6 times y prime. Now we have to add to that 10 times y, and there's our y. So we have e to the 3t, and first we'll gather all the c1 terms, which is right here. And we only have a cosine times 10. So it would be 10 times the cosine of t, but we don't have any sine of t terms plus e to the 3t, and now we gather all the c2 terms. Notice there's only one. It's the sine of t times 10, so that would be no cosine terms, but plus 10 sine of t terms. All right, so now we have y double prime minus 6y prime plus 10 times y. If we add them all together, they should add up to 0 because this says this equals 0. All right. Here we have e to the 3t times the c1 terms. We have a plus 8 minus 18 plus 10. That gives us 0 cosine of t. We have a minus 6 plus 6. That gives us plus 0 sine of t. Plus e to the 3t times all the c2 terms. And we have a plus 6 minus 6. That's 0 cosine of t. And a plus 8 minus 18 plus 10, that gives us plus 0 sine of t. And sure enough, indeed, it does add up to 0, which means that this is definitely the proper way of writing the general solution to this second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients in such a way that we end up with complex root using the characteristic equation complex root usually involves a real part and an imaginary part, but like we showed you in the previous video, we were able to get rid of the imaginary part by combining the constants in a particular way so that we only have to write the general solution in real terms rather than imaginary terms. And as you can see here, it works just fine. When we plug everything back in the original equation, it does come out and it does work. And that's how it's done.